Hey, girlfriends, you're hanging with me today. I hope you don't mind. I have to tell you, I've never done this before, where you follow me from soup to nuts, how I get ready every single day. So here's what I do. I'm a morning shower person. I can't get ready until I get that cold, good shower in the morning. Maybe not so cold all the time. I use my Purity Made Simple on my face with my Clarisonic Mia. I use a lot of different hair care products. I use everything you can you name it i use it and then i come out and i sit down at my vanity where i am right now with my coffee cup and my coffee because i can't be without it just a minute it keeps me company my mirror is magnified i have to have strong magnification because i always feel and i've said this before that if you can look good in a strong magnifying mirror and you know many of you are scared to use one of those, then you're gonna look great outdoors. So after I put my moisturizer on, my Elemis Moisturizer Pro Marine Cream, I then use my spackle. And I am not married to any of my spackles, but I am a little partial, especially when my skin is dry, to my hydrating spackle. So I love using a little bit of my hydrating spackle. I put it all over my face. I use it under my eyes, right under here because it really gives me like a second skin. After I do that, and I'm, by the way, this is quick, 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 quick in the shower. I don't linger because I'm always in a rush. The next thing I do is I use eye spackle. It's waterproof. I just take a little bit. I put it on my eyelids, right, just like that. And I mix it on my skin just right on my eyelids. I bring a little bit underneath my eyes into the corners. Again, you don't even have to be precise, but like this is me because this is what makes my eye makeup last during the day because it's waterproof. And then I'm gonna jump. I leave my face alone. I'm gonna jump right into my eye makeup. Now I'm using different palettes from my line, but today I'm gonna use something called the Uptown Chic Eyeshadow Palette, okay? And again, I'm just running around. I'm not on air today. So my main objective is to put my makeup on once and never have to touch up that makeup all day. So I take a light color just to set that eye spackle. So I'm using like the lightest peach color that's in this palette. And I just blend it all over right on top, right? But now I am a woman of a particular age. And so I do have a little bit of hooding on my lid. So I like to use something like a contour in the crease of my eye. It helps to really just sort of make my eye look a little bit more open. It flattens that crease hooded area. And again, it's so soft that like I can't make a mistake with it because I'm not doing precision. Like I told you, I need to get out of here quick. For some reason, I never leave myself enough time wherever I'm going or I'm just... I work better under pressure. I'm one of those people that like left like doing homework to the last minute. And um, you know how, how that goes. When I have too much time, it's like I don't get it done. When I have little time, I get it done. And I know you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I just put a little bit of a taupey brown that's in that palette. I love eyeliner. And I believe in the three E's. And it's eyeline, it's eyebrow, and it's eyelash. If I had to skip eyeshadow, I would but I'm using one of my black eyeliner pencils. Um, it's waterproof. I'm using the black diamond. It's, I'm using it at the base of my lashes. Again, I have to be in front of a magnification mirror, otherwise I don't do a good job of seeing. So I'm putting it on the upper lid. Now, and very often I should tell you that I don't always do a bottom line, especially when I'm just running around. Maybe it's I'm doing an errand, maybe um, taking my mom to a doctor's appointment. Maybe I'm gonna pick my son Daniel up. He's over at NYU. And when he says, mom, I wanna come home, I jump. Um, it's not very far, but I like the, having the luxury of being able to go downtown and pick him up from his dorm or his school. Okay, so there's my black, okay? I'm looking good, right, girlfriends? Uh, okay. And then I like to take my Kajal, my eye Kajals. I love these. These are a little thicker. You don't need precision. I'm using like a gilded bronze color under my lower lash. Um, I don't like a precise line under my eye, but I like the precise line on top. 
and that's where I did the black, the black. And I always do that black, by the way, at the base of my lashes. So it makes my lashes already look a little fuller. But I connect my eye kajal to my upper line. I work from the outer coming in. Again, you don't have to be a makeup artist to do this. I'm telling you, it's so simple. But now I'm getting to the good stuff. So when I did makeup on my clients, I had a store for like 23 years on the Upper East Side. I always would say, you know, until you could do a gorgeous job on the eyes, but until you put your brows on, and some might say, Lord, your brows look perfect just the way they are. But I would say to you, wait till you see this. Okay, this is my universal brow gel pencil. Can't live without it. So in the beginning of my brow, you could see it's much thinner than the thicker part of my brow. I don't have much of a tail here. This waterproof gel pencil is my savior. Honestly, there are times that I'll just put this on, literally, put my sunglasses on, a great lip, a little bit of balance and brighten foundation, and get out of the house. This way nobody sees that I haven't done my eyeliner, my eyeshadow, but my brows always look to perfection. So I'm just taking this and I'm following my brow. I'm building out that tail. And then I'll show you how I comb through it to make it look like feathered strokes. But I am telling you, until you see my other brow next to this, you wouldn't believe what a difference this makes. I flip the pencil and there's a little spoolie wand on the other side and I comb through to make it look like, you know, more feathered strokes were applied so you don't see that it's a pencil. I mean, if that didn't ever frame my eye, I don't know what did. I, I honestly would rather do that than anything else. I mean, it's night and day. It lifts my eye too. It makes it look like I had a little Botox action, which I could probably use soon. Okay, so again, I'm just following my natural brow, doing feathered strokes like this, straight up where at the beginning of the brow. I don't lay it flat over there. I go straight up, straight up, because that's the way your brow grows, right? And then I come here, right? And then I start, now I start going flatter as I'm entering the outer portion of my brow, building out that tail, lifting that arch. I like to tell people to work higher on their brow because then it looks like a brow lift. In other words, don't come down here, work on top of your brow little trick because then you get your eyes looking heightened and more open. Okay, so there is the spoolie brush. I'm combing through it, right? I mean, honestly, if I'm not talking to you, girlfriend, this could be like a seven minute makeover. Now I'm gonna do my lashes. There are times that I will curl my lashes if I'm going out and I really wanna get a big curl out of my lashes, but I love all my mascaras. And by the way, if you ask me, if I use anybody else's of anything, it's like bad karma for me. Like I only use my stuff. I design, I do all the product development. Why wouldn't I use my stuff? It's all the things I love that make such a big difference that I don't need anything else. If it's missing, maybe from my line, but usually I'll create it if it's missing. So here's the Lash Boss Max. And this is Va 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 Voo Mascara. I mean, I'm telling you this mascara, it's called Lash Boss Max for a reason. It really makes the lashes volumized, thicker, lengthier, curlier, blah, 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 blah. There's a reason why I don't do my concealer or my foundation until after my eyes. And it's because if you poke yourself in your eyes like I just did and you make a boo-boo underneath, you don't have to worry that like you had already done all this good stuff on your face. So that's just, for me, that works best, is doing my eyes first. This way, if any shadow sprinkles down below, I don't worry that I've done all this prep work on my face. Look at the difference already in my eyes. I feel like I'm like lopsided, like this side's a little heavier because my lashes are more open. And then I go again, Lash Boss Max. Now. Typically, when I'm doing this, gals, just so you know, boys and girls, I may only do like one coat because I'm in a rush. But when you sit down to do your makeup, which is how I like to do my, I never stand when I do my makeup. The mirror is really close to me, again, magnified. I'm more relaxed, I'm less in a rush, and I like the process, like I enjoy seeing the transformation. I find that if I'm in a hurry and I'm standing, 
if I'm in a hotel and I and the light is you know by the window I'll generally take a suction mirror with me when I travel on the weekends and I'll put like a, literally a five to ten time magnifier on a window because that's where the natural sunlight is I like bright light when I'm making up I find I'm in I'm not as relaxed so I want to get through my makeup quicker but when you're sitting down and like you're taking a sip of your coffee just a minute Mm. you find yourself enjoying the experience more. I know it sounds corny, but it's really true for me. And it's something I haven't stopped doing for years. Okay, bottom lashes. I know a lot of people like get lazy and they're like, I'm not going to do my bottom lashes. Well, you look uneven when you do just the top and not the bottom. Now, I will give you a tip that I use. Sometimes I just do that top liner. Like I told you, when I want to get out of the house super quick, I'll just do the line on top. So I'll only do mascara on top. I may not even do the bottom lashes, but this is still, I'm telling you, it's a five to seven minute makeover, back and forth. And if you make a boo-boo with your mascara, you know those Q-tips, um, they sell these make Q-tips for makeup. They don't have a lot of cotton at the edges and they're pointed on one side. They're really great for picking up a little mistake and one little hint, if you get mascara, if you get a big blob, leave it alone. Don't attack it. I know you want to attack it. Don't attack it. When it dries and you put the Q-tip to it, it flakes right off. So leave it be and don't try to attack it. Okay, I am now officially, girlfriends, in my everyday life and boyfriends, I'm not leaving out the boys, done with my eyes. Now I'm going to go right to my foundation. I do foundation first, and I'll tell you why. And I'm using... Um, filter first foundation but I'm using the medium color for me um, I do foundation first because let me tell you that sometimes I get enough coverage on certain days out of my foundation and it may be all I need that's not true I always need concealer who are we kidding um, I did start off by saying I'm a woman of a particular age so I have hyperpigmentation large pores um, you know, redness. I have it all. Lucky me. Um, but the truth be told, sometimes a foundation may be enough. The filter first foundation I live for because it's creamy and it makes my skin feel hydrated along with the spackle. Right? So you just go like this. I don't bring it on my neck, but I make sure it's blended in my jaw. There are times I will use a sponge, just blend everything down. Right? It's a very light layer. I get warm, so I never want to feel like I'm wearing anything heavy on my skin. Um, but then I go to my concealer. And I'm using our Spackle Concealer um, in medium. Okay, I go all around from the inside corner to the outside corner, right? And then I just blend it in. This has a little bit of a lighter finish, and it has a little bit of blurring to it. And I'm just using my fingers. By the way, if you want to use a foundation brush, have at it. If you want to use a sponge, have at it. There's no right or wrong. This is like you coming on the journey with me, what I do in the morning. So I'm just really telling you how I do it in the morning. They here I have a lot of redness, not pretty, um, around the sides of my nose. And I have that one spot that I think all of us have, that hyperpigmentation. I pat it so it really stays on and covers it's like a stippling effect because if you blend it in you actually blend it out and off now you might be saying to yourself all this I'm telling you five minutes it's really like a five minute makeover I wish I could do it and not talk and then you'd see guess what I'm using and sometimes I use this alone balance and brighten foundation in medium that is the color of the day. I'm using it with a retractable powder brush that we have. And this is just setting everything. You know, I always say, you know, you could take a shortcut. It just means that you're gonna probably have to touch up your maker makeup later in the day. And for me, I'd rather do it and take five extra seconds or five extra minutes and know that my makeup's gonna hold up. So that was Balance and Brighten Foundation. Then I happen to love, this is a palette that we have called Garden Rose. It's a baked color um, palette that has both highlighter in it and two different um, 
a blush and pink grapefruit and two different highlighter colors. So this is how I do blush. And I want to just point this out to my girlfriends and boyfriends because I, I have to say something. I think many of us put blush on the wrong way. So I like to start at the height of the ear, come along the cheekbone, then I go into the temple a little bit, right? And I always say, if you don't know where to go, just smile and put it in the apple of the cheek, but it's almost like an inverted V. That's how I do it. So again, top of the ear, along the cheekbone, into the temple, and what's left on my brush, whatever is left, I brush across my lid so that my eye makeup looks harmonious with my cheeks and I don't look like I have like a separate thing of eye makeup, separate thing of cheeks. I try to blend everything together, right? Now I'm gonna put highlighter because for me, girlfriends and boyfriends, I have to just tell you, I'm not kidding around, this is the piece de resistance. If I'm not gonna contour, which is putting a dark color onto my cheekbones, and I typically would never do that during the day, maybe if I'm on camera, this softens the edges of where you put your blush on so you don't see the demarcation of your blush line. This is called French Vanilla. It's part of the Garden Rose um, palette that we have, which I said, it has two different highlighters in it and the Pink Grapefruit Blush, which is my, one of my favorites in my line. Um, and it's soft, you can see I'm softening the edges of the blush, but at the same time, I'm creating a lifting effect in my cheekbone. And there's not a lot of pearl, and during the day, you're not gonna find me wearing a lot of pearl anyway. I take the French Vanilla, I like putting it on the inside of the eye, where typically that shadow is caused by the nose. So I'll go on the inside corner of the eye. I go right under here, it sets my liner, and I'll even put it on top of my concealer. It doesn't make it look powdery, because it's a baked product, which means it is not powder, it's a cream. And so it's setting my concealer, which means my concealer will last longer. It's setting my eyeliner and making my eyeliner pop because I'm highlighting around the eye line. And then I like to take sometimes just a little and put it and pop it right under the brow to create that sort of heightened brow effect. Another brow tip to make your brows look more open. And then sometimes I might just do it right down the front of my nose. And then I'll often put it all around my mouth, which I don't tell and share a lot of people. It stops my lipsticks from bleeding and feathering. And then I'm just using, because today is like one of those days where I needed two cups of coffee. One minute. So I'm gonna put a brighter pink because I just feel like I need something a little brighter. This one is called Prince Street Pink. It is a baked iconic lipstick. It's not terribly bright. It doesn't have frost in it. Mm. And mm, that's pretty. And it's shaped in a way that it really sculpts my mouth. Every day I don't really do lip liner. Uh, and I want my lipstick to look like really framed and highlighted. I will use a lip liner, but I'm just sculpting my lip with the lipstick itself. Looking good, girlfriend. I never say that to myself, but you know, today I'm sharing that with you. And then, um, if I were to do lip liner, I'll just tell you real quickly, um, I would put it around the lipstick itself after. It frames the lip and makes your lips look bigger and stops your lipstick from feathering and migrating. Okay. Hmm. Okay, then I'm going to top everything off with my new personal love of fragrance. It's called Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mall. I just put a little on my chin. And I actually even have a stone, a rose stone, in my vanity drawer that I've had for probably 30 plus years that I wipe on me for good luck every single day. I've never shared that with anybody. I once had a reading and she gave me a rose quartz stone. And just because I'm a little bit superstitious, that finishes off rubbing into my skin with my perfume. And can I just say, voila, I am done. Voila.